Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm just going to be doing a quick video talking about what I learned from reversing the private API for Tencent Wii game. Um, hopefully it'll give you some insights into reversing whatever private API you're hoping to use. So just a quick background so that you can kind of understand what it was that I wanted to get out of this. Um, for the game that I like playing, League of Legends, there are pretty often statistic websites like this, op.gg, where you can go and look up your teammates or the statistics for whatever character that you're playing so that you can help yourself improve by looking at the data that presents itself from your matches. However, for the Chinese super server, they do not offer this functionality publicly. They want you to use either their mobile app or their desktop app, which is, this is like a similar concept to Steam. Uh, you can look up people's profiles, but of course this data that I want, you see here's some games here for from North America, this data does exist, here they are, it's the same concept, right? Uh, you can click on this and see some more detailed statistics on what's going on, but I wanted to be able to access this data um, from outside of this client. So the way that I did that was by reversing their private API, which is undocumented and everything. You're not supposed to be plugging into it, but of course this application needs to get its data from somewhere. And if you can spoof that you're logged in using this application, you can get whatever data you could get normally through this. So my first thing that I remembered um, coming back into this was a video by Live Overflow, which had him reversing the API of a Guild Wars 2 trading bot. Um, and I remembered him using Burp Suite and another thing called Fiddler. Uh, maybe those are two different videos, but I tried downloading Burp Suite. Burp Suite didn't work for me. It seems like more of a, a corporate thing. Um, but Fiddler worked for me and it did everything that I needed for desktop at least. So there are two programs that I'm gonna recommend to you. Uh, Fiddler, Fiddler is the uh, is a proxy that you can use for intercepting HTTPS traffic on your desktop. This application is not useful though for proxying mobile applications, which I'm going to get into soon too, because I couldn't get the data that I wanted out of this. I needed to use their mobile app, which exposed easier endpoints for me to plug into. So uh, ultimately this was not my savior, but it does have a lot of great features. It allows you to replay messages that you get to see if uh, if you can get the same response back or generate requests. And then you can export your output as curl and then import that into something like Python. So this was quite a useful tool for me, even though it didn't ultimately solve my problem. And then the second piece of software that I used is something called Midim Proxy. Uh, Midim Proxy will let you intercept traffic on mobile devices. So I had my iPhone proxied through this HTTPS proxy. So I could still read any response data that came back even though it was encrypted with HTTPS because my, uh, my phone would accept this as a certificate authority and it would be able to decrypt the data. I did have problems with proxying my Android phone because there, there's a practice called certificate pinning over there where an application will not accept. Even though your phone trusts the certificate, the application doesn't. So the pin certificate data, I wasn't able to intercept that. I'm sure that there's a, a workaround of some kind. But for me, I had an easier time intercepting iOS traffic than Android traffic. And now I'm going to give you a quick demo of uh, what it's like setting up Midim Proxy. So if you don't know how to find your IP address of your computer that you're on, uh, type ipconfig slash all, you should have something, a 192 address or a 10.0 address or something. Because we want to have things connect to this computer, we're going to just quickly disable the firewall in general on or off I'm gonna go off off and then it's gonna say hey your firewalls off the point of a firewall is to block incoming and outgoing connections to your computer we don't want the firewall to block any incoming connections because we're connecting to port 8080 that midim proxy is opening up uh, then once you're all done just go and use recommended settings and then you're back to normal 
So on your iPhone or Android, just go into your Wi-Fi settings and select proxy. Uh, type in the IP address of the computer that you are using for MIDIM proxy and type in port 8080. If you get this black screen while well, you try to go to midim.it, which uh, will detect if you're correctly proxying or not, uh, it's probably a firewall setting or something like that, then just download the correct certificate for your device. For iOS, you go and you download the profile and install it. Install again. Then on iPhone, uh, there's a similar step on Android here. You actually have to trust it as a root certificate. So just go into about and hit trust as a root certificate. Then when I open up WeGame here, you can see the requests start rolling into Midim proxy. Get user session list. So here's the cookie data. Here's the body data of the request. So now we're going to rebuild this request inside of Fiddler. So we copied that cookie data over. Most of the time the user agent and uh, the rest of this is not very important. But we do want this body. And the correct URL to request is this one here. And we get a, let's look at this in JSON. Success, we get the same response that we were expecting. Once you've created a request inside of Fiddler or whatever other program, you might actually want to just use it in something like Python. For me, that's what I was using for my testing just because it was the easiest, right? So if we look at this, same sort of thing. When you're reversing stuff as well, here, let's open up uh, useful links. When you're reversing things, take notes of everything that you recognize too, like, oh, this probably does this. You find a useful link, add some information about it, because there is a lot of things that you're not going to understand. And maybe you'll come back across something, uh, you know, the next session that you have of trying to reverse and, oh, this probably connects back to this or, oh, what's that link again? Having a document with all of the links that you've already come across is very, very useful, especially uh, these are the responses and what things you have to request it with. Uh, this will save you a bunch of time in the future. You can also save your captures and come back through them in the future, but this is, uh, this is what I did, and this was very helpful to me. Uh, but let's export this and use it as curl, because it's, it's very easy to convert something from curl to uh, Python or requests at least. So if we just go here, export selected session, and we go to curl script next. I'm just gonna save it to the desktop. Now we don't really wanna make a request with this. What I wanna do is just copy it to my clipboard. Curl to Python. Curl command, Python command, and as we can see here, uh, let's just go new file. We'll be able to see the resemblance though. This is uh, test2.py. The key in this one is wrong. Uh, and I also don't think it does the right request in the body. Where's the body? Yeah, so for me, I also needed to, because mine included a body request as well, like for, anyway, the way that you would add that, you just create the string the same way that you would uh, anywhere else. This is the, the same body that I was requesting with, like I did earlier, and then data equals D or whatever you have, and then get the response. So quickly to demo what I did with my reversing here, um, here's the Tencent Wii Game website, you just log in, it adds this pop-up, and here's that same profile that we're looking at here. We can see, even if you don't play the game, you'll probably be able to recognize the images. Here's his most recently played matches. We'll have a quick look at this one. Uh, there's the items that he bought over here. So he built these boots, he built this. And if we just refresh this, and then pop this down, those, those are the same items that he built. Obviously, mine is a million times better than theirs. Uh, haha. I can go and navigate to other people's profiles. I can refresh this guy's data, check out how his matches went. It's way faster. Um, and 
much more similar to this version. I just have a theme on this one. I can, I could add support for that in the future, but I don't know if I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, but there is some information that I'm not able to access within the, within their API. Data that doesn't exist, obviously, if they don't supply it at all, you're not going to be able to use it. They don't use this data in their own stuff, though, too. The, the data that I'm talking about in particular is there are these two things here. These are your League of Legends runes, and they do not keep track of that, so I am not able to interface with those. But uh, profile navigation, resolving people's uh, account from their username. They have a bunch of different area IDs. I was able to select all of the area IDs and reverse those as well. Uh, understanding where the endpoints are for the items so I could make a local copy of all of them. I Another thing that I'd recommend is keeping requests to a minimum. Um, here's all of the items that they have inside of their database. Even though these are just like regular HTTP HTTP traffic requests. I think if you can keep your request to a minimum, you have a much lesser potential of being uh, found out and them changing how something works and making a headache for you. So um, I just have all of these being streamed in from a different source, but they it's a one-to-one -one match. And then if I want to go and scrape them again in the future, I have my little Python script with uh, the endpoints for where those images are. So hopefully I don't have to do that in the future, but yeah, this is what I came up with with my reversing. And I hope that for you guys, you can build whatever project it is that you need.